Hi everyone, it's Henry here. And in this video, I'm going to take you through how I've converted up and painted up a librarian model that's sort of inspired by some old school, uh, old hammer, space hulk type artwork and, uh, and miniatures to go alongside that Deathwing squad that I did recently that absolutely is not going to turn into an army project. So the uh, librarian model that we got in the recent uh, Indomitus box is has got a lot of callbacks to the the early Terminator librarian from the the Space Hulk sort of Rogue Trader early second edition days, um, and it, it made an obvious starting point to to try and create this conversion this kit bash with. Uh, so I've used that kit. I've used um, some bits off the new Dark Angels upgrade sprue. Uh, Terminator head, uh, and then for an axe, I've converted up one using the uh, what's his name, Ran Fafnir Ran from the Heresy uh, range. So those those are the main bits that I'm going to use. And tools wise, you can see here: clippers, knife, hobby tool, sanding sponge, two glues. That's key. Thick one and a thin one, both plastic glues, uh, and the hobby drill, obviously, to badly drill barrels uh, into uh, the storm bolter with. So there was a few sort of things that I wanted to focus on uh, to give me that that sort of vibe that I was after that that nod it wasn't meant to be a direct sort of replica of the old miniature but I loved some of the the calling cards from it um the axe I loved the fact that he had uh, a helmet on in that older uh, artwork in the older miniature as well um and it was just thinking to myself how can I take a model that we're going to see a lot of like everyone's got um, that, that, that's playing 40k probably I need to change the silhouette a little bit I need to change the sort of the key focal points of him so his bolter his storm bolter here uh, his axe his helmet things like that and um, for the storm bolter I was looking through my bits box and I found I had a few sprues of the older Deathwing uh, Knights box that we had up until very very recently and it had this lovely ornate left-handed storm bolter arm um, which thought would be absolutely perfect a little bit ornate you know so it fits the fits the librarian you know that kind of status symbol thing um, but also the fact that it is uh, not it's not wrist mounted and you're holding it and it's got that nice old sickle uh, magazine uh, style on it as well um, so I want to drill the barrels always drill the barrels um, punch a couple of uh, holes I use uh, uh, my airbrush needle to do that with I don't necessarily suggest you do that use a pin or something uh, then I use a small drill bit see if I've got it roughly centered if I haven't you know I will drill off to the sides a bit and stuff as long as it's not too bad uh, and then I'm just going to drill those out uh, and then I like to drill through the side as well uh, just so it's it looks more like a sculpted thing rather than just a little divot in the end if it's possible that's what I like to try and do I'm terrible um, at drilling drilling them out I really am um, but uh, I, I do think it's I do think it's worth it I think I think it adds a lot uh, particularly when you've got it facing forwards like this as well I think it just looks a bit odd when it's this 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 block on the end uh, and then I get a fatter drill bit uh, and drill out the, uh, the, the the front two for the front end of the barrel uh, as it were uh, and that's all the work I'm going to do uh, on that storm bolter the old terminator kits the arms fit absolutely fine on the new ones um, the detail is is like it's 90 95 percent the same um, sort of level as we've got on the newer kits um, so if you've got those older space marine sort of upgrades then they absolutely work fine as a kit bash uh, with the new stuff uh, so as I said, the helmet's a big one. I'm pretty sure this little bit of artwork that's popped up here uh, is meant to be a librarian. The the really old schemes, the librarian, certainly the Deathwing librarian that the, that the studio painted up was in the Deathwing, was in the, the bone-coloured armour. Um, but what I really love is that he's he's got his helmet on. Like I like heroes without a helmet on. It's, it's really cool. I, I do like that. But for me, one of the easiest ways to change a miniature is to change its its head, its face. So whether that's giving a normally helmeted model uh, an unhelmeted head or, or vice versa, um, you know, I, I think it's a really effective way of changing uh, the miniature in quite a dramatic way, uh, for quite a small bit. So getting it in there was a little bit of a challenge, as you're going to see. Um, just took a lot of test fitting, a lot of trimming, um, and but the good news is it goes in there fine. Uh, you can get there eventually. Um, I just want to say massive thank you to those of you that support us over on Patreon. Um, that support that you give myself and Andy is allowing us both to do this full time now, uh, which means that we're just going to be able to do so many more projects as well as keeping up with the YouTube here each week, keeping up with the Patreon uh, each week as well. So you get a video over there each week, usually from Andy. Um, he's starting his uh, Golden Demon project at the minute, some amazing uh, Eldar miniatures. Um, so yeah, if, if we didn't have that support from you guys, we wouldn't have been able to, to make that jump and, uh, and go for it. So we're ever so grateful. Uh, for that support um if you do like what we do um particularly here on youtube and stuff but you can't support us on patreon for whatever reason um 
likes, subscribes, comments, shares with your friends, they will they make a massive difference to, to little channels like ours. Um, so yeah, we, we really do appreciate that as well. Um, you can see as I've been fiddling around with the head there, um, I can't pop it in and then turn it to where it needs to be. So I've taken the, the front piece out, I've put the helmet roughly at the angle I want it, because I want it looking down that Storm Bolter arm, right? Otherwise, I think it looks a bit daft when they're not looking the direction that they're, they're pointing their guns, unless it's like completely the opposite. It's that cool kind of movie style, I'm not even looking where I'm shooting kind of vibe. Um, but uh, that, that wasn't what I was going to go for with this. So I've just sort of tacked it in place using the uh, extra thin glue. Uh, and that's going to allow me just to sort of not have to use blue tack or anything like that. And I can just sort of wiggle it around a bit still because the, the bond is soft. Um, so it still allows me to squidge it like you see there. And with a tiny bit of trimming, lovely stuff. I can get him looking down his bolter. I was very excited at this stage. This was that moment where I was like, yes, this will this will work. Um, there is a little bit of a gap underneath his neck uh, and where it would attach to the, the neck piece at the top of the torso. Um, so all I did was put a very neat blob of modeling putty and not record it. So I've taken my donor model here on the left. Um, sometimes when I'm I'm doing things like this, I will buy two sets of the miniatures to to practice on one. So it, if it does go wrong, I can still film a video, uh, which is what I did in this case. Um, uh, yeah, a little blob underneath the head, and, and it was absolutely fine. So the next biggest, or the, the last biggest part, really for me, was getting his axe right. Now I love the the old Rogue Trader era axes, and then even throughout a uh, second edition, as you just saw from that picture there from, from one of the Astartes uh, books, the force axe just has, it's basically the wrong way around. So it sort of has the, the beard of the axe facing facing forwards, facing up much, much, much more. Um, and I th just think it looks awesome. And I was just all my bits everywhere, all my bits boxes. I just couldn't find the right thing. I had these Kopeshes, I had these different forge world axes, things like that. And then I came across this, uh, the axes I had left over from the RAN model uh, from when I converted up the Astral Claws uh, character, which if I remember, I'll stick a link in for. Um, but I still had his axes left and I was like, oh, these could work because they're absolutely enormous. I think they look ridiculous on a power armor miniature, but for a Terminator, I was like, this could be perfect. So trim, 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 glue together. Very, very happy. Uh, and then, yeah, I was going to stick a big book on his head, but in the end, I like that cleaner look. I thought he took it closer back to the original. Um, and yeah, I'm just going to use the little Dark Angels upgrade lad uh, with his book. Now, as for paints, as you can see, blue paint, MIG Atom. Now, you might have seen these uh, knocking around uh, online. Various different um, painters have been sent review copies and things like that. I believe they're going to be available uh, very soon. I haven't been paid to do a review of them, and this isn't a review of them by any means. Um, but they did send me through a box and said, try them out, see what you think. Uh, and this is the first time really where I've I've had a project where I was like, oh yeah, I think I I will give that a go. You know, there's a couple of blues in there. They could work really well uh, for the pretty in your face blue. Like I love, I really am enjoying doing these, these sort of old hammer inspired um, paint jobs and, and projects. It's forcing me to use colors, you know, um, in ways I don't often with my own stuff. Um, they're a little bit bright, a little bit gaudy, um, but still trying to make them fit my taste. Um, yeah. It's, it, it is good fun. Um, incidentally, this video is absolutely intended as a companion to those Deathwing videos I've already done. Uh, so there won't be uh, tutorials for every single piece of what I paint on this miniature because I have covered it in those other videos. Uh, and they're not very wrong and they're quite good fun. So I would suggest if you want to see it, uh, go and have a look. Um, so one of the first things you'll notice uh, as I'm spraying with it here is I'm getting a bit more tip dry um, than I have got with other uh, paints. Uh, typically, I use the airbrush. Um, I say this is not a review. This is literally the first time I've used them. Um, so I'm just going to give you my thoughts on that that first experience kind of thing with them. Um, the coverage was excellent. Um, but to be honest with you, blue often covers great. So that's not necessarily telling us that much. They say that they behave like a lacquer paint. And I see what they mean. I deliberately didn't want to read anything about them before I'd used them. Um, but after I'd had a go, I then read through the box what it said. And one of the characteristics or selling points that behave like a lacquer paint. And it, I think it's true. It's sort of, it creates a very obvious sort of shell almost um, of paint on the model. And I found that it was, it was very, very easy to obscure the detail. It was very easy to spray on too thick. Um, but as I said, the coverage was excellent. I think the colors are, are cracking. Um, you can see here I've done that the, exactly like I did with the, the bone colour. I've gone for a Prussian blue, so the dark blue is the base coat. I've then done a 50-50 mix with the normal blue as a highlight. Then I've done the normal blue on its own as a final highlight. And then I've gone back in with the Prussian blue, very heavily thinned, just to 
reinforce any shadows that I perhaps had, had oversprayed on. Um, and then I thought, yeah, let's have a go with the green as well. There's not much of it uh, with this miniature, but I've used the dark green by Atom as well. So, yeah, they were... Oh, how unprofessional. Left my phone on. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I bet that's Ben or Andy as well. That's, that's shocking. Um, so, yeah, that's the... Uh, I thought I'd give a go on the green as well. You can just see I've done a classic sort of uh, grayscale pre-shade uh, on there. Quite a nice green, actually, um, but need a little bit more in the shadows of the mid-tones, so I've just used Dark Angel's green contrast all the time. I'm always spraying at 25 PSI. I'm using a 0.4 millimeter needle and nozzle, and I'm using, in this video, our Harder and Steenbeck uh, Signature Series Evolution. Uh, so I was just checking that the light source there matched up uh, on the shoulder because I find the easiest way to do these inset sort of shoulders um, is to, if I want to use my airbrush, is to do that color first, cover it in a liquid latex mask. So here I'm using Humbrol. Um, use whatever brand you like, um, but I, li I like the Humbrol stuff. Um, then you just mask it off straight over the paint. Um, it, it can be a bit delicate if you're a bit rough taking it off, but generally I think you're fine. If, if you're at all nervous about that, just give it a little spray of gloss varnish before you put the um, the liquid mask over it. Uh, and then I carried on with the blue and then peeled it off. Uh, and now I give him a quick gloss coat, polygloss, before we move on to the oils at the decal stage. So I will come back and, and talk about the MIG paints at the end as well. That's my sort of my, my thoughts on them. Um, for the oil wash, I've decided to use the same colour that I've used on the other squad for a little bit of consistency uh, because, you know, obviously this is not an army project and they don't need to look good together, but they it's important that they do look good together. Um, so I've gone for sepia. It's a nice dark, cold brown colour. Um, and I'd have used this anyway, even if I hadn't, um, hadn't done that Deathwing squad uh, already. Uh, and then it's just... One of my favorite steps, but pin washing in the oil. We thin it down with mineral spirits into a, a fairly thick wash consistency and work my way around the model. And obviously with this newer sculpt, it's got all these lovely runes already sculpted into the miniature. Um, I'm not a fan of glowy rune stuff generally, so I've chosen not to do that. Um, but it still meant that the things like the pin wash would be really effective because it would run into all those cool sort of nooks and crannies. Now a little watcher in the dark. Um, these little characters are, are awesome. Um, and they came in around sort of second edition Angels of Death Codex. Um, it's these little characters. And amazingly, one of them has a book. So this is off the new Dark Angels upgrade sprue. Um, so there's quite a few of these guys now scattered about the various Dark Angels kits, which is, yeah, which is super cool. Um, I've chosen to go with green on his robes, and that's because I wanted to find a triangle of green on the model. So I had green on the Terminator shoulder pad. I had green on the Storm Bolter. And then this little guy was like, well, if I give him a green robe, that'll give me a nice triangle of, of green there. And one of my concerns was having the librarian in blue, which I, which I wanted. I didn't want him in the Deathwing colours. I like that sort of strong blue colour for a librarian. I think it's cool. I think it helps them stand out uh, on the you know on the table. Um, I was a little bit worried. You couldn't really tell it was a Dark Angel from the front because you could barely see his shoulder pad. Um, and... Yeah, so I was like, well, let's put a little bit of green in there. And this felt like the obvious uh, obvious way of doing it. So as you see there, I've used exactly the same greens as did on the shoulder pad. And then what I've done here to just add a little bit of interest, a little bit of character to him, I've taken thinned brown. This is Thondia Brown by Games Workshop. I've probably thinned this three drops of thinner for every one drop of paint. I'm just using normal uh, Vallejo thinner. It's what I've got at the moment. It's what I use with all my water-based acrylics. Mm -hmm. um, works fine with the GW stuff. Um, a little thin layer of that around the sort of lower quarter of him uh, and then i've just mixed in a tiny bit of black to whatever was in the cup uh, and i'll just aim that towards the very bottom there just to kind of give him kind of muddy soggy robes like he's just stepped out of the forest or whatever he's done one thing i wanted to leave in this uh, video and talk about just briefly is the, the back to black stage um i refer to it as a lot lots of people refer to it as is sort of after you've got that main armor color done so i've done the decals here i've got a, a matte varnish on him so I, I can paint on him and stuff I really like blacking out most of the details on the miniature at this point, simply because I find it quite hard to look at when it's all the one colour, um, particularly Space Marines and stuff when, you, when you're airbrushing. So I, I just find it really useful. Some people think it's laborious. I know our commission chief Ben doesn't do it and stuff, but that's the reason, the main reason I do it is just to help myself break the model up a little bit more. Um, you know, some people might just sling base coats and stuff on. I think that works really well too. Um, but often, you know, there's there's metal bits, so I, I will black it out sort of anyway. But that's, that's the reason why, in case anybody's wondering... <laughs> Um, now, for his, I don't know, his magic pipes, whatever they are, these things that uh, librarians have, I thought if I'm going to go old old style inspired, then might as well 
do some bright colors. I found this very difficult. Um, but I did ivory as a base coat and then I've used Imperial Fist Contrast uh, and then Cassandra Yellow Wash, that proper orangey yellow uh, look. Um, we're so fortunate now how easy it is to paint yellow. Um, the, the, the paints we've got available now is amazing. Um, just imagine trying to have to do this back in the back in the nineties <laughs> when this when this model first or this you know when, when the, the they first came out. Um, yeah, amazing. It will get toned down a little bit later when I do that final oil wash uh, alongside the metallics. Um, but yeah, it was really a bit too much for me. Uh, now just lots of edge highlighting. Um, this I found that the atom blue uh separated out on my wet palette very quickly and i wasn't able to use it for edge highlighting very well um so in the future if i do want to use them again i will i will just have to use that on a regular palette um so i switched to i think it was calador sky um it was, it was close enough like to do to do my edge highlighting with um and i did this sort of tippy tappy edges and a few scratches around the whole miniature uh, and then i added in a little ivory um and i'm just doing a few sort of select uh, edge highlights here around around real focal points Again, more edge highlighting than I would typically do on a miniature, but I think it suits the style. I think it suits the look. Uh, and actually, I thoroughly enjoy doing it as a process. Um, and, you know, that's to me, that's one of the, you know, still a very important part of painting a miniature is, is enjoying the process, not just the uh, not just the final result. Um, so, yeah, took a while, but but very happy with the results um, for his his lunchbox here for his satchel. Um, I've just done Thondia Brown because I'd used it earlier on something. Uh, on the, the Watcher in the Dark uh, and then just mixed in Carrack Stone to highlight it with uh, again because I had Carrack Stone on my palette from painting the uh, Crux Terminators and stuff and then wouldn't be sort of Old Hammer without some some red uh, in there as well I was really not sure what colour to do the book and then I was like oh go on let's do red then uh, so I've gone for Corn Red here and I'm deliberately doing a sort of splotchy stipply scratchy couple of base coats then I work up to Mephiston as well uh, and this is just to give it that sort of old you know Encyclopedia Britannica type uh, type look. It's probably what he's carrying around anyway, isn't it? Um, very embarrassingly, uh, I was chatting to Ben about this project this week. I had never in my head made that connection between librarian and books. Uh, I always knew like wizards carried books around because they had spells in. I was like, well, that obviously makes sense. But the librarian and the book thing didn't make sense. So please don't mention that uh, to anyone. Uh, but I did feel a bit of a wally. Um, when I realised that the other morning when I was chatting to Ben. Um, but yeah, and then again, just adding in Carrack Stone uh, to lighten it up. So at this point, I'd done the other bits. I say the details for those are in the previous uh, videos, uh, the crux and the, the purity seals, things like that. So I wanted to give his armour the final finish. Uh, so I've done a 50-50 mix here of matte and ultra matte, both by Ammo Mig. Uh, my favourite varnish is to use alongside the Vallejo uh, Polygloss. Uh, and uh, yeah, before I do the metallics, because metallics will have a different finish anyway. Um, basing wise, I've done exactly what I did in that previous video. Um, really enjoying doing this style. I'm definitely going to explore it, take it a bit further, more sort of showcase level uh, for some projects later in the year that I would like to do. Um, so yeah, that's it. Um, and then yeah, that's him. The, the metal's done. Simple gold, simple silver, just like I've done in the previous uh, videos. I've stuck him on a 50 mil round base here. He normally comes on a 40. I stuck him on a 50 so I can put the Watcher in the Dark uh, on there with him. Um, I'm unlikely to game with this, I, I, so I, it doesn't really matter. Also, I don't really think it, it matters not the type of gaming I do. Uh, anyway, um, and obviously, you know, I'm not thinking about gaming because this is definitely not developing into an army project. So please don't put down suggestions in the comments if you would like to see other units uh, added in. Uh, because I certainly won't consider making videos on those uh, in the future, probably. But yeah, he was just a, a ton of fun to do. Uh, again, I've learned a few little things on here. It was nice doing less battle damage and weathering because it forced me to be a little bit neater. Um, and also, you know, I'm still coming off the back of this, uh, whatever I've had the last few weeks, and, and my hand's not very steady at the moment. So it was just nice to paint something uh, just, just relaxed before what's coming up over the next couple of months, which is going to be pretty intense um, but I can't wait to to share with you guys uh, on here so the other major thing I guess for this video was uh, the paints my first thoughts on these these MIG Atom paints um, if you've watched the videos for any length of time you'll know that I'm a huge fan of uh, Ammo MIG products uh, I've used them since I got back in like 10 15 years ago wherever it was now you know I love their enamels I love their modulation sets or acrylic modulation sets I love their basing stuff I love their pigments or, or I've, I've I just adore it. So when they said, oh, do you want to try them out? I was like, yeah, of course I do, because I like your company. I like your products. Um, 
these are the first things I've used from them that I, I am not struggling with, but I'm going to have to go back and work on with. I, I haven't found them immediately uh, familiar uh, to use. Um, so that doesn't mean I you know, need to dismiss them, but I need to have a think about where, where these may fit in uh, to my sort of paint box. I think you're know, looking back on it, successful project. I think that head swap uh, for the helmet head, I think losing the thing on his on his lid, his little icon, that's that's made that silhouette much more similar to the the old silhouette. It's made, it's made the, the look much more similar to those Rogue Trader era uh, librarians and those awesome Grey Knight models that we had at a, a similar time. Uh, the axe I'm really, really pleased with. Uh, I've just gone for simple silver on the axe because it's just what I like at the moment. I'm, I'm veering away from sort of coloured power weapons and stuff at the minute. I'm sure it'll come back in, but there was, there was already enough other stuff on here that was a bit leery for my taste uh, anyway. But you know what? I really like how he looks, so maybe I do need to consider changing um, some of my colour choices, uh, things like that. But as usual, if you've got any questions about it, pop them down in the comments. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks ever so much for your support. Take care. I'll see you next time. If you've liked any of the models in this video and you fancy having an army of them yourself, but perhaps you don't have the time or wherewithal to get it done, consider dropping us an email at commissions at cultofpaint.com and maybe Ben can sort you out.